I meet so many people who say to me, oh, I can't run because I have arthritis or as, and they always mention the knees. Um, and the, the best thing that I could have done, in fact, even my surgeon has told me this, the best thing I could have done was to carry on running. It keeps the joint lubricated. It, it stops it stiffening up. It just have to do it right. Welcome on to the next edition of the Faster Beyond 50 podcast. It is brilliant to be with you once again this week. My name is Brad Nadelt. We've got the coach, Lindsay Parry, with us. Lindsay, nice to touch base. Are you well? I'm very good. Thank you, Brad. Excellent to hear. I love these episodes of our podcast where we get to chat to somebody within our community who is phenomenally talented as a runner, super inspirational, and we've got another doozy lined up today. Uh, we're going to be chatting to Jacqueline Millett, and you've been working with Jackie for a number of years now, but uh, I think a lot of folks in the UK running scene will have seen Jackie around uh, and know a little bit about her story. She's been featured in some some pretty big publications uh, over the years as well, uh, and she's got a phenomenal, phenomenal story. Lindsay, Tell, tell me a little bit about Jackie, sort of uh, your sort of experience of, of working with Jackie over the last couple of years, and uh, we'll get Jackie on in a sec. Cool. So, uh, yeah, a, 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 a common friend, if you'd like, he's one of my clients, but you've had some dealings um, with him over the years. Danny Suskin, uh, who I've been coaching for years and years, he mentioned to me, I don't know, about half a year, maybe before COVID, but it was kind of in and around that. He said, you know, if there's this friend of mine, would you consider taking her on and helping her? She's perfect for you, older runner, started running late, but she's really got potential to win her age group in comrades. And I was like, cool, I mean, let's, uh, let me have a conversation with Jackie and then we will take it from there. Um, yeah, and, and so that's, that's kind of where it started. And Jackie was very fast, um, running not not much over 50 minutes, I think, for, for 10Ks, if memory serves me correctly. But that wasn't her focus. That focus was on marathons. And in particular, she's in love with the Comrades Marathon, which is a, an 89-kilometer or 50-mile um, ultra that is run in South Africa. Um, yeah, and we just got on uh, very well, very quickly. And it's been a super fun journey, but the thing that I guess I was most surprised about was literally how late and how fast Jackie had managed to get at running. Um, and I was a little nervous at the start about <laughs> improving on that some more, which we did do in the 10, our, uh, the, the shorter stuff. But in the marathons, we never really got to getting her new PBs. Uh, but we certainly are keeping her on one of her primary goals at the moment, and that is to run as many sub or run sub fours for as long as she can. And I don't want to steal the thunder in terms of how many marathons and how many sub fours before we get her on, but that is that's that's it in a, a nutshell. And of course, she is striving to get to 10 comrades finishes. Um into her 70s now, so that will be a phenomenal achievement. But before we bring Jackie on, let's just share with us some of some of the PBs that Jackie's got over the last the last few years. I mean, Jackie is fast. Uh, she is very very fast. Yeah. So we we have still run. Uh, I think the last uh, marathon was a two fifty six. Uh, two. Listen to me. A three three fifty fifty six. Um, as we were coming out of that COVID block. Um, we were, a I think we were a fraction under 50 minutes for 10 kilometers. Um, she has run some really good low 150 half marathons. Uh, and very recently in Valencia, uh, before the, the tragic storms hit, um, she ran a 203 um, half marathon as part of her preparation going into the Valencia Marathon, which we'll now have to see if that is going to go ahead or not. Um, but yeah, given uh, followed instructions perfectly, and I think that puts her on track for getting her to at least one more sub four marathon, either in Valencia itself or uh, sort of March, April next year. 
I love it. Well, let's bring her in. Jackie Millet, nice to have you on the podcast with us here today. Uh, Jackie, just hearing those times, I mean, I, I'm in awe, absolutely in awe with, with the times that you've been running. But I, I think what is, for me, most incredible is that you only took up running quite, quite late in life. T- tell me a little bit about how you got into running. How long have you been running and, and how it all started? Oh, good morning, both of you. Yep. Um, I, I, oh, it was my late 50s. Um, and I, I had a sort of minor health scare, nothing um, too dramatic, but I just thought um, I need to start taking care of my body. Um, and I went to a gym um, and signed up with a personal trainer because I knew I, I'd never done anything really sporty. I had a very sedentary job. At the time, I, I was a psychotherapist. I worked from home, sat in a chair all day. So I, I wasn't really doing anything active. Um, I signed up with a PT at the gym who um, actually then became a family friend. Um, I was I didn't know it at the time. I was his first PT client. Um, oh. And he's in this gym with all these young people and, you know, must have, must, his heart must have sunk when I turned up um, but he took me on and we got on really well and what I didn't realize is each week he was putting me on the treadmill to warm up and he was turning the speed up every week and eventually he said to me you know you, you're okay at this um, running business you should give it a go um, and it took a while but um, with his help and he would turn up um, to the first few races with me um I, I started running 5k's um and 10k's and then um went along to park run and the park run was just start starting out in the uk so that was a big um plus for me to be able to run with um people who weren't strictly you know uh, uh, dedicated runners so i didn't feel out of place um and very quickly within a year i'd moved on to the marathon distance um and i just loved every minute of it and and jackie you you talk about moving on to the marathon distance how many years have you been running and how many marathons have you run today i think my first marathon i think i was 58 um i'm now 71 and i'm not not actually sure i think it's something like 200 and 35, 240 marathons. I'm not entirely sure. I counted up to 100. <laughs> and then I, I, I have a list somewhere. What, what, is, what is it about the marathon distance you love so much? Oh, you, uh, you feel like a real star for the day. You know, there's, there's sort of um, at events, the, the crowds, the support, the 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 feeling when you cross the line, you really feel you've achieved something. Um, and there's, you know, it, it's it's involved me traveling to such amazing places all over the world and meeting people. That's, I mean, even I've just come back from Valencia where, you know, there were um, these awful storms and um, someone who befriended me on Strava who lived in Valencia messaged me and said, you know, are you okay? Can, can I do anything to help? And we just went out for a run together. Um, the, the, the running community is incredible. And I mean, it's to me, to be part of that is something really special. Yeah, absolutely. And Jackie, when it comes to the majors, you've also, I think you're just about to do the, the double uh, yeah. six star. And, and I, obviously, I, yeah. obviously the news has just broken that Sydney's mm. been added, so they keep adding more to the list. Uh, t- <laughs> tell me about your, your love for the majors. They're, yeah, they're, they're fantastic races. I mean, uh, um, I, I know I bump into people at times who say, "Oh, I don't like these big city marathons." Uh, you know, it's there. Um, there's all the fuss and bother about getting there and and um, queues and so on. But I just love the whole atmosphere. I loved it in New York when you know we had to go out to Staten Island and the, we sit for a few hours, but it was just more time to get to talk to people, um, soak up the atmosphere. Um, I, 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 I've, done, I've done them all at least twice except for Tokyo. Tokyo I've just done once. Um, I did them all with my um, daughter and my husband and my son started running now. So he's, he's done three majors. So I have to go and complete the others with him. 
I'm really Another... lucky to be able to do. Yeah. I mean, at my no. age, you could get a place very easily. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So look, I mean, we're obviously going to dive into the performance element mm. elements of your journey, but this is the part of of your running that I really love, and yeah, it's it's a uh, one of Jackie's superpowers, Brad. Like she really does connect people together, and part of the reason why I think she loves the marathon distance is that it allows these connections to take place. Um, and you know, Jackie will go. If a, if a race is a train trip away and she's not going to run it, but she's got friends of which um, there are many, and I yeah. count myself privileged now to be included as one of those, then her and Cam, her daughter, will hop on a train and come through to Amsterdam for the day or for an evening, um, and they will just come and visit, even if they aren't running the race, and support. Uh, and I see that playing itself out in, in all the races. And there's always a, an amazing crowd of people from Portugal, South America, mm -hmm. from Asia, from the Americas. Um, and we all get together at these races uh, for a dinner or a lunch, often both, yeah. <laughs> and the celebration afterwards. Um, yeah, so and I think that's also part of what's just been really incredible uh, that you do I mean you genuinely do you don't just meet people and get to know a little bit about them in the excitement to the race at New York they often turn into lifelong yeah. friends as a mm -hmm. result of those conversations and it's yeah. fantastic and of course there's all the the people we meet now through coach Parry as well you know there's it, it just adds to this sort of family of runners it's brilliant yeah, but before we get into the performance side of things, I was lucky enough to experience one of these events uh, at Comrades uh, in June this year. That was the last time I, I saw you, yeah. I, yeah, I, mm. I got to see one of these celebration uh, events and, and was in awe, Jackie, just as Lindsay mm. said, was just in awe of the 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 variety of people who, who love being around you and, and, and the circle of people you've, you, you, you drag around the world with you, which is, which is amazing. And that, that once we, once, once we get touch, cause that's how you came on to, to our radar was through comrades. And I mean, obviously you've run a lot of marathons. If you've got a goal to get your, your permanent number 10, 10 comrades finishes, tell me a little bit about your experience with comrades before we get into the performance side of things. What makes that race? I mean, you've run lots of races around the world, but what makes comrades so special? Oh, um, it, it's got everything. So I, I, I first ran it, um, it. I hadn't been running that long. I was 60. It, I, I treated myself for my 60th birthday present to um, a trip. And at that point, I, I didn't know many people in, in the running world. So it was really the start of it. Um, the race, is, is, is well, obviously, it's a, an amazing challenge. I'd, I'd heard about the Comrades race before I was a runner, and I'm not sure why I knew about it, but I did. Um, and um, I'd, uh, so I, I, I actually went on a forum in the UK and met some people there who, again, are now um, lifelong friends. But, you know, they filled me in on some of the details, and it just sounded fantastic. And it really lived up to its promise. The, the, the challenge of the race itself, the, the support, the crowds, the, the South Africans who come up and say, you know, thank you to come for coming to my country and running my race, and um, a, a huge opportunity to meet people, which is, you know, good for me. Um, it, 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 the course is fantastic. I, I just can't say enough about it. It's just, it just got to me, and then... Um, the first year I ran, I tripped on one of the awful cat's eyes and I actually ended, ended up with a broken shoulder and broken ribs, which I didn't realise until I'd finished the race. So when I went home and my daughter said, they were all really nervous about me going. And she said, OK, you've done it now. That's it, isn't it? And I said, no, I've got to go back to run the the down run. Um, and she said, well, you're not going back without me to look after you. And I said to her, well, if you're coming, you've got to run. And she wasn't really a runner then. So she started training and she came. And then as, as soon as she got there, she saw the attraction. And she's been every year since too. 
and now my son's going <laughs> so he's he'll be doing his he's done three so yeah it's a real family thing too and it, it does and want Martin, to martin's the martin's yeah. the only sensible one he hasn't martin's run comrades <laughs> <laughs> he's been banned from marathons so yeah he kept ending up in the medical tent he's not a marathon <laughs> yeah i mean com comrades is a it, it is brutal it is tough but it once it gets under your skin it's really difficult to let go but let, let's talk about some of the performance side of things jackie i mean like i said you you took up running quite late in life but you've you've definitely got ability and and you've you've improved and seen some amazing performances uh you've been working quite closely with Lindsay and the rest of the team here at coach barry for for a, a couple of years now what, what do you think has been the the biggest thing that's made like the, the biggest needle mover in your running like the biggest thing that's made a, a huge difference uh, well i i think there are a number of things but at the top of my list is accountability you know i i before i started working with Lindsay, i i I just think, do I want to go out for a run today or not? Um, what races shall I enter? What I've no idea what pace I'm going out at. I just go out and run. Um, and it was actually it was during COVID that we started working together when when all the events stopped, and I was at a complete loss. I didn't know what I was doing with running. It, I, I realized, you know, I was just going out for a run every day um, because that's all we could do. And then I, I, I have a um, arthritis in my knee from, um, I broke my knee um, in 2014 and running every day aggravated it. So I couldn't go and run every day. I, and I thought I need to do something to give the running some meaning and to, to actually start looking after myself again. So um, through Danny, I, I got in touch with Lindsay and um the first thing he did was cut down the number of times a week I ran. Um, and, you know, he started just getting the running into some, some sort of shape. It, uh, I, I couldn't have told you paces before. I just went out and ran and, you know, we started talking about um, paces for different races and training runs. And um, so, yeah, accountability, that, that support, the... I mean, I could look up a training plan online, I suppose, but I didn't. And and it would never be tailored to me, especially as I get older. You know, things are different. Um, temperature regulation is a real problem. Um, fueling is a problem. Your body just doesn't work as well. You can keep it really fit and healthy, but I, I get my plans sort of altered week by week according to what's happening yeah i never used to get colds flu anything like that and as i get older i can feel my body is more frail um and the the knee problem rears up from time to time and so we work around that um but yeah it's um I, and then of course the strength work i came into running really strong because i'd been working with the personal trainer in the gym and he um, he left to go and live in Australia after a few years. And so I stopped doing strength work because I was a runner now. You know, I didn't need strength work. And um, I, 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 that's another thing that Lindsay's got me back on to. And I realize how important it is, you know. Um, yeah, so there's so much, there's so much. Mm -hmm. Liz, let me let me bring you in here. I mean, you've obviously seen Jackie's running progress o over the years. What what do you think some of the the things that Jackie's done and done well that has really contributed to her her running success and and consistency over the last few years? Yeah, so having worked with with Jackie now for quite a long time, and just while she was talking, it also just twigged my my memory about how we've almost gone through some some stages. Um, and my, my memory has been jogged very well now. And I actually remember that I, I met Jackie and Cam. Actually, I almost got stuck in the UK. I wouldn't be married anymore if I had because <laughs> they were all, that was almost the last trip pre-COVID. And we yeah. share, we share another know. passion, yeah. which is Liverpool um, mm. Football Club. And... Um, Jackie's actually got a, a genuine excuse for being a Liverpool supporter. She actually comes from Liverpool, unlike 
me who comes from South Africa. The point is, I was in the UK to watch Liverpool, and while I was there, I gave a comrades talk at the boat house. Yeah. That's where I met them, and then got out of the UK with 48 hours to spare. I was then potentially ground zero of the COVID production line in South Africa and had to take myself off to the hospital for a COVID test and self-isolate. But anyway, so it was during COVID, which I actually think gave Jackie a unique opportunity to dial back from the marathons. And, and so I think there's a, there are quite a few things that we changed that allowed some short-term rejuvenation in Jackie's running. And that was that we reduced the number of, of sessions she was doing. But also, she was running a lot of marathons very yeah. close together. And so COVID obviously took that opportunity away. There were some opportunities around these self-timed 10Ks. They were actual measured routes. So we knew they were 10Ks and you had these staggered starts where you'd arrive and start between, say, 7 and 8.30 uh, in these batch starts. So, so it gave us a, a change of focus and we could set some shorter term goals, change the way that she was training, give her some structure. And obviously that then led to some really fantastic 10K times in the short term. Um, and then we, we struggled a little bit initially, Jackie, to convert those 10Ks mm -hmm. into the marathon. Um, and so that was then around pacing. So then the kind of next phase that we went into was, okay, well, how do we learn to pace the runs mm -hmm. better? Uh, which certainly helped and improved. And then we were getting better results in the marathon, but we still weren't quite getting that um, same translation. We added strength training, but to be honest, at the beginning, the strength training was the thing that we got to when we and if we got to. So <laughs> initially, very yeah. typical, very typical running. The, the, the strength training was seen as the vegetables. Um, and then before we actually fix the strength training, the thing that really made us jump and then get well under the four-hour barrier again, which then made us both believe we could do this four-hour for a good few years still to come, and that was that you went for a longer run with a friend. I still uh, remember yeah. the conversation clearly yeah. because one of the things that I was constantly um, a bit of a stuck record on is like, you've got to run yeah. your easy runs easier. You've got to run your easy runs easier. You've got to run your easy runs easier. But, and this is, this, I'm, I'm mentioning this from a coaching point of view because I see this over and over again. And one of the things that Jackie said to me after she got this right, she said to me, it seems so silly now, but at the time, she had this time in her mind that was when I get slower than that, I've lost it. I've lost my mm. ability. I've got to accept that I'm not a fast runner anymore. Um, and so she was holding this line, which meant that as time goes by, the intensity of that run was getting higher and higher to, to maintain that pace. Anyway, she went out with this friend and ran a much slower long run and then got on our call the following week was like, I know what you mean. Yeah. I just feel <laughs> so much better after that yeah. run. And then, and that's it. The next marathon, she absolutely nailed. Like we were, yeah. we were hovering like between 4.03 and like 4.13, you know, some, some really not so, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but in, in Jackie's mind, so not so good. And some like close, but not there. Boom, suddenly we hit like, I think it was a 354, yeah. three, 356 at slowest. Um, and now we've moved into this phase where, where the strength training, I think, is having the biggest yeah. impact on both how Jackie feels, but very importantly around this arthritic knee um, that is really allowing her to carry yeah. on running um and so that's kind of the the next 
phase of this journey, if you want to call it that. If you're over 50 and want to recover from sessions faster, run pain and injury free and improve your endurance, then be sure to join Lindsay and I for our upcoming Fast to Beyond 50 Masterclass. In it, we'll show you how we helped a 70-year-old run a 47-minute, 18-second 10K and how you can take those exact same principles and apply them in your training. Simply scan the QR code that's on screen right now or click on the link in the description below to save your seat in the training now. We look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, I, I meet so many people who say to me, oh, I can't run because I have arthritis or as, and they always mention the knees. Um, and the, the best thing that I could have done, in fact, even my surgeon has told me this, the best thing I could have done was to carry on running. It keeps the joint lubricated. It, it stops it stiffening up. It just have to do it right. And I do have to get the muscles around it to support the knee. I have to keep them strong, but yeah. So I went out for a run yesterday with the same friend because I'd had this week in Valencia, all the, the training had been mixed up and I ended up doing my speed work on Saturday. And then I had a long run Sunday, um, which isn't ideal. But um, so I went out with the same friend. So we ran a really slow, long run together. Um, and it, it's still there in my mind. As long as I do that run, it doesn't matter how slow it is. Mm, absolutely. I mean, the, the, that's the goal is the long, slow, or long, easy, not necessarily slow. Lindy always calls mm. me out for saying it's a slow run, but yeah. it's, a, it's easy is, is the way it needs to be. But Jackie, one thing I wanted to ask you, and, and Lindsay, you can chime in here as well once, once we've heard from Jackie is, Around recovery, uh, I mean, Lindsay did mention that you run a lot of marathons, and, and we talk about recovery being so important, particularly once you hit 50, 60, and beyond. Mm. How do you yeah. manage your recovery? Like, what, what is your sort of process? Is it, do you go on feel? Do you wake up in the morning and go, you know what, I'm not feeling it, so I'm not doing the session today? Do you track heart rate variability? What, what is your process to track your recovery and, and then make decisions from there? Well, what, one thing is I'm lucky enough that I can always message Lindsay and ask him, you know, this is how I'm feeling, what run should I do? So that I've got that advantage. But um, I do I do track my heart rate variability, but it's, it's a bit sort of, you know, you wake up and you look at it and it's low and you think, oh, um, does that mean I shouldn't run today? Or I'm not really sure entirely what to do with it. Um, uh, the, the recovery is built into my program and and if something goes wrong and I, I um, message Lindsay, he'll, he'll alter the program for me and um, recovery is really, really, I note it's so important now for me. One year I did run um, 52 marathons in a year um, and um, there was no recovery time at all. And I, I hate to think what I was doing to my body, but I was a bit younger. <laughs> um, now it's it's really um, very important, very built in. And, and if I need to take the time out, I will. I think that's probably, it's more um, important than to push through the runs and mm. certainly slowing things down. You know, it's, that's, that's been crucial. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Lindsay, so, you're, you're, uh, what I will what I will say is that Jack is very good at telling me when there's something up. So I have one of my big frustrations as a coach is that a lot of people will almost take the let's see how it goes approach um and be um like oh, it can't be that bad or let's let me get to the end of the week. Or oh, I'm talking to Lindsay in two days time anyway. So you know I'll do these two runs. Um, whereas, you know, if, if Jackie falls or uh, like the most <laughs> recent one where you twisted your knee when you were mm. walking um, through a little village. So that kind of thing is very quick to um, just not do it and say, listen, this it didn't feel right. You know, sometimes that'll be it. She'll just tell me it didn't feel right. I started warming up and it didn't feel right, so I didn't do the, the um, session or – I went out to do an interval session, for example, but the, the only place I could run was a path and it was so uneven. And, you know, I think as you are approaching late 60s, 70s, going through middle, mid 70s, like my father, who's just recently had his birthday, um, you, you, those are 
clever decisions to make. Like you, we can shift things around. We can move things to a different time in the week. Do your hard running when you're feeling fresh and the conditions are, are set for it. Yeah. Um, look, I still have to put in some forced recoveries after marathons. Um, I think, you know, one must never live in regret, but I really think that if Jackie had found running as a teenager, she would have been a special athlete um, because her recovery is amazing okay i can't run the number of marathons in a year that jackie can run at at 71 so she does recover exceptionally well but she's also really aware of when she's not ready um and will speak up um so yeah and it I think does happen really... more often as you get older i know i started as an older runner but i've noticed that you know i i, I just can't keep um the same well obviously um the crazy way i started but it, but even now i have to keep taking a step back but that's okay because it, it's still it can be worked in it's okay yeah and jackie the, the interesting thing is and and what Lindsay said too is often and i think this cuts across all ages not just when you're in your 50s 60s 70s where if there is a session if you're following a structured training plan and there is a session to do often even if you're not feeling it, you feel like you have to do it. So yeah. having that ability to go, you know what, I'm not feeling it today. This can change is to to have that flexibility. And then also the honesty enough with whoever you're working with, whether it's one-on-one -on -one with Lindsay or whether it's following one of the training plans on our platform and you jump into the forum and ask that question. Lindsay, you always say the session, you you, you never get injured from the session you don't do. So if things aren't right, your body has a way of telling you things aren't right. And if you push through it and you keep pushing through it, the margins for error in your 20s and 30s are, ti are, are pretty big. But when you get into your 60s and 70s, they're tiny. And when you start pushing the envelope like that and not listening to your body and not taking advice from somebody outside, you're just putting yourself at a higher risk to end up with a catastrophic injury where you're out for six months, 12 months, and then it's really hard to come back. Yeah. Yeah, I had nine months out when I broke my knee. I I, I tripped um, on the towpath, and I hadn't I didn't realise it was broken. I carried on running. I actually ran five marathons on a broken knee, and destroyed some of the bone. So I now have a very weak knee. Um, but I, that was just me pushing on, thinking. I, I did go to physio. I got told it was IT band, but actually the end of the femur was was broken. Um, so um, I, having had nine months out once, I can't afford to have an injury like that at my age. It, I mean, there's too many things I still want to do. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to err on the side of caution. Well, let's touch on some of those. What are the things you still want to do? What's what, what's in the short to medium term and long term? What are some of the running goals you've still got, Jackie? Well, at, at the top of my list is is to get my green number at Comrades, which is a big ask still. You know, last year, I think I was the second oldest female finisher. And so it's not it's I'm not taking that for granted. I just hope I can do that. Um, so that's the main goal. I, in order to do that, I'd still I'd like to run a sub four this year so I can get into my pen D, which I'm comfortable in. If I don't, I'll, you know, as near as possible to that. So that's the, the next goal down. Um, Travelling with my um, son and daughter to a few more marathons. Um, I, I'd, lo I'd love to do the Cape Town Marathon sometime. Um Sydney's been added to the list. I don't, it's a long way. I've got friends there. My, my coach, um, my old my old um, PT coach is, is in Sydney and he came this year with his baby to visit me. So maybe I can go and visit him and run Sydney. Um, just enjoy going out, being with people, with run, runners, chatting to them. Um Next, next up is supposed to be the Valencia Marathon in December, if that goes ahead. Um, and the only other things I've got booked up at the moment are London next year and Comrades. So um, I've certainly started spreading them out more, but there's probably going to be something else in between um, when I get round to it. 
it's 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 a it's a running podcast but you know one of the things that's very close to me um, is this concept of longevity and and healthy living as you get older and so part of it is also um jackie and martin love going on hiking tours and mm. one of the places that they love coming to is south africa mm -hmm. um, and so they'll be doing some amazing tours when they do visit south africa again okay, next year. Coming, and so yeah. mm. so i would include that in in goals that is really to be able to just keep experiencing the outdoors and doing the things you enjoy doing yeah. for as long as physically possible yeah, we, we we are taking a bit of a tangent here, Jackie. I did I didn't know that about you, which is amazing. But I I, I think I actually sent it to Danny. I should have sent it to you too. Uh, I sent it to Lindsay, and he thinks I'm crazy. But there's uh, I found a hiking trail that you can hike. You, the you entire sent it to me. You did send it. Well. it. Yeah, I know. It, the the logistics look um, complicated, but it sounds absolutely amazing. I'd have to come over and and stay for a while. <laughs> that doesn't. That's not a bit. That's not a problem. You no. Know <laughs> <laughs> no, it's incredible. So, I mean, for everybody who's listening, it's a north to south hike of the Kruger Park, which is a, a large national park here in South Africa. It's big five. So you've got lions, leopards, elephants, buffalo, the works. Uh, and it's basically over three days. I mean, you can't walk in that park generally. It's over three years, I should say. And you do six trips of five days each. So you start at the north of the park. It's about 650 kilometers. Uh, and over that three-year period, over those five or six little uh, tranches of, of time, you end up walking the entire Kruger Park, which I think is absolutely incredible and is has been added to my list of things i need to do before i i kick the bucket so yeah that is definitely definitely one one to do jackie I I love it's, the, it's the only hike i've seen where you have to enter a ballot to, yeah. to, yeah. to yeah. get yeah. into yeah, they have, they have an auction uh, of the first one and i think they only do three of them a year for each of the legs so the the first one is an auction and you've got to buy all eight spots so i'm, I'm not quite sure how much the auction goes for uh it was a, a fair whack of money to register for the auction to start with so i didn't register but uh it is definitely <laughs> going to happen i've i've no doubt so absolutely jackie i've loved chatting to you i i know we are running out of time and uh yeah congratulations on everything you've achieved and we love we love meeting you around the world and, and particularly here in south africa around comrades and we look forward to catching up early in the new year when you are out again Thank you.